It's championship week, and Steve here at the Big Mountain wants to break down the Big Ten championship game. We've got a great weekend of conference championship games coming our way, so we're back on the Big Mountain, where we bring you a detailed focus on the Big Ten and the Mountain West. Hey, welcome to the Big Mountain. If you're new here, I am JY. This is my good friend, Steve. Uh, we do all things Big Ten and Mountain West, but this episode is purely Big Ten as we yeah. want to break down the Big Ten championship game, Michigan versus Iowa. And we're going to let Steve run the show. He's the Big Ten guy. So, Steve, give us your thoughts on this game. Yeah, so, you know, we're, we're coming off of one of the most exciting seasons in, in Big Ten history. You know, we had all the sideshow circuit stuff with Michigan and the cheating scandal and all that. Um, and that all of that led into probably the probably the most watched um, game between Michigan and Ohio State ever. Yeah. Uh, the most watched college football game in I think about ten years. Um, last week where Michigan pulled out the pulled out the win, I think by six points. Mm -hmm. Just an epic game. Um, and, you know, Michigan's been a freight train all season. You know, the freight trains, they, they start a little slow. <laughs> takes a while to build up that steam, and it did at the very beginning when yep. Harbaugh was on his first suspension. Boy, does that right. seem like a year ago. It does. When, when you gotta, when you got to delineate between his first suspension and his second <laughs> suspension, uh, seems like a long time ago. But, but we saw this freight train coming mm -hmm. um, down the tracks all season. Michigan has just been on a roll, yep. just absolutely crushing people, just killing people. Um, and including, they were able to go, you know, it was a very close game with Ohio State. Ohio State got it to within three, with like maybe seven, eight minutes to go. Yeah. And you thought if Ohio State gets the ball back, this is, well, Michigan just went down and killed like seven minutes off the clock, yep. just drove down, just kind of sucked the life out of them, kicked another field goal, made it six so that they had to score a touchdown. Then Ohio State had less than a minute to go down. They just weren't able to do it. So you got to give Michigan all the credit in the world. You've been high on them all year, especially yes. JJ McCarthy. Yep. Had a great year. He had a pass in that um, in that championship game where he threaded it through about a four inch window. Like I don't mm -hmm. even know how the football fit through there between two defenders, right through the defenders. Um, and both the defenders had their backs to him, so I don't think he would have thrown it if they were facing sure. him. But still, just an amazing play. Um, and he's been on fire all year. Yep. Um, you know, we, we looked at him early as a Heisman Trophy candidate. He's kind of faded in that race a little bit. But I wouldn't be surprised to maybe see him on the stage in New York as a, mm -hmm. as a finalist. Um, so that's Michigan. So let's talk about Iowa. Yeah. So you and I, at the very beginning of the season, you know, we were kind of mocking Iowa. They had to to save the, the job of their offensive coordinator, Brian Ferentz, the son of the head coach, Kirk Ferentz. Right. They had to average 25 points a game. So, I mean, pretty much right away, with the exception, I think, of one game yes. out of their first five or six, they were they were trailing behind that. And it was obvious halfway through the season they, they were not going to do that. Now, mm -hmm. we, you and I did a breakdown at one point, and there was only like two teams in the Big Ten that were averaging 25 points, right. and I don't think any of them in the Big Ten West. Right, right. Um, so, it, you know, it probably wasn't, well, it probably wasn't fair, um, but it is what it is. Brian Ferentz, he's going to be, you know, in, in the... To give, to give Iowa credit, they turned that situation that was kind of a crappy situation for their offensive coordinator into mm -hmm. the players rallied behind them. Yeah. Um, when they, when they basically, when they clinched, I think they beat Illinois to clinch their berth into the, the Big Ten championship game. They basically gave Ferentz a, a, you know, Gatorade shower. Like he was the, like he was the head coach and right. celebrated him. So whatever he's doing next year. But, you know, the, the simple fact is their offense is just not good okay yeah yep. it's it's probably downright bad and so i wanted to look at some numbers here yeah um so i so for me i really like espn um has their fpi rankings or ratings um it's it's more of kind of like a mathematical formula based on efficiency you know how well they do against the teams they play because you can only control right you, you know how well you do against the teams you play right you, the schedules are made five six years in advance yeah. so you know, how well they're doing against their schedule, the teams they play, and how good those teams are. Do they take advantage? Yeah. Do they beat, you know, crappy teams by only, you know, a field goal? Or do they really hammer them like yeah. Michigan has done at certain points this year? Sure. So, for Iowa, it, it really tells the story of their offense and defense. A, a tale of two halves mm -hmm. of, of a team. So, Iowa's FPI ranking on defense, number two in the country. Wow. It was actually higher. I really I looked at them as like a top five, top ten defense, so mm -hmm. I was a little shocked. 
number two in the country on defense mm. this year, meaning the teams that they play, they 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 strangle them on defense. Yeah. Um, you know, they don't mess around. And even when their offense is not doing much for them. Mm-hmm. And speaking of that offense, I, I just want out of, I think there's maybe like 130, 140. Yeah. Um, I think it's in the 130s. Low yeah. 130s, I believe. So yeah. what, what what would you guess that their oh. offense would be ranking? I don't think you've seen my numbers. Yet. I haven't seen your numbers, yeah. but I've looked at some of those team rankings yeah. over the course of the year. Now, sometimes you see you know yardage per right. game and all that kind of stuff. And this is an efficiency <laughs> ranking, which is a little different, a little more math. math I'm going gonna, gonna to guess... Uh, 120. Yeah, so you're almost spot on 124. Okay. So as far as efficiency, as far as doing as well as they can, you know, against the opponents they have, um, Iowa has the number two defense in the country, but the number 124th offense in the country. Mm. That just really tells you everything you need to know about these two yeah. teams. Now let's look at Michigan. And again, we've been high on Michigan all year. Yep. Um, you know, we have done some videos about the Harbaugh scandal things. I mean, it is what it is. And we, we've been clear all season. We wanted to, to kind of differentiate between the off the field stuff and the on field stuff as much as possible. Yes. Obviously, there'll be a little bit of carryover, but on the field, disregarding everything else, Michigan has been an absolute juggernaut this year. Yep. So for them, oh, I know. So so for Iowa, the last thing was their offense was ranked one twenty four, defense two. So overall, they're forty one. Okay. So Michigan, not surprisingly, overall number one team in the country according to ESPN's FPI efficiency rankings. Okay. Didn't surprise me at all. Yeah. Offense number three. That actually surprised me a little bit. Mm-hmm. But when you think about it, that, that you know, maybe their running game hasn't been as dominant as last year, but still just a, a great running game, great two headed monster. When they need to take the life out of an opponent like they did against Ohio State, they're right. able to do it. Right. And and JJ's just been one of the top I mean, whether you consider him top four, top five quarterback, he's right up there this yep. year. Has has made the big plays, has gotten first downs, even against Penn State where he got beat up a lot. Yep. And he was moving and getting those first down yardage. Either, either with his legs or a lot of times with passes. And yeah. not long passes against Penn State, but he, you know, that's what you gotta do. You gotta against the, the in the in the tight games against good teams, you gotta move the chains, yep. keep it going. And then he's also done against the bad teams that you should destroy. He has put up big numbers yes. and helped them destroy him. So yep. overall number three in the country offense, that surprised me a little bit. Did not surprise me. Defense number five in the country. Mm. Um, very good defense, you know. I, I, to me, Penn State, Iowa, and um, and Michigan, and maybe Ohio State. You maybe yeah. you may have four of the top five or six defenses in the country mm-hmm. all playing in the Big Ten. So it didn't surprise me they were number five, and obviously puts them at number one. Yep. So when you look at those numbers, it's an obvious mismatch. You have two very good defenses, almost exactly the same, and you have one team with an absolute juggernaut on offense, mm-hmm. and one team that can't get out of its way on offense. Yep. Now. I was prepared. I, I've I've kind of seen this coming. Um, early in the season, I had some. Of, I picked a few different teams as contenders: yeah. Iowa, Wisconsin, and maybe Illinois as a contender for the Big Ten West. Mm-hmm. And as we've gone on, uh, you know, I kept saying, you know, Iowa as they keep on winning, they're probably going to be in this Big Ten West championship game. Um, I was prepared a few weeks ago to say their their X factor Cooper DeGene. Okay, mm-hmm. he's there. I think he's a safety. He's he plays in the secondary. Okay, he's their punt returner. He ran back that kick against Minnesota. Okay, um, where he's telling people to get out of the way, and the refs took that as a uh, as a fair catch call somehow. Yeah, yeah. Um, ran so that was called back. But every time this season, early and earlier in the season. When they were struggling on offense, they needed to find some points. They needed to find some magic. It was Cooper DeGene. Hmm. Um, Interceptions, uh, punt returns for touchdowns. uh, He was their lightning in a bottle. And so I was really hoping, you know, whoever they were going to play, that that he would be the guy that I could say, you know, he could be their X factor. If he goes wild, if he goes off, if he has an interception, he has a punt return for a touchdown. Yep. Well, here's the thing. He's hurt, and he's out for the season. That's so, not good. No. So, really, their only hope, I was only hope, Cooper DeGene, out for the season. So, in, in our in our picks video, I picked Michigan to cover 21 and a half. Yep. I easily see Michigan beating Iowa probably three to four touchdowns. Okay. I could see Iowa keeping it close earlier, early, and we've talked about this. Um, we talked about this earlier. I could definitely see Iowa keeping it close. They're, they're playing with a lot of heart and soul. They love their coach. 
uh, their offensive coordinator and their head coach. Yeah. We can we can mock them all we want. All we want. The national media can mock them, but the players believe. Mm-hmm. So I can see Iowa coming out, making a good show of it in the first half, keeping it close. But in the end, the Michigan freight train. You know, how do you stop a train? You don't. You get run over. Yeah. And Iowa's about to get run over and lose by three or four touchdowns. Mm. Interesting. Well, a couple things. As you mentioned, I mean, I have been high on J.J. pretty much the entire year. Just really impressive. Really good ball decision skill uh, skills, you know, in terms of not making many mistakes or, or any mistakes. And just really impressive. I mean, just very mature back there. Uh, makes good reads and all that kind of stuff. Um, and, yeah, I was high on Michigan for pretty much the whole season. Um, you know, a little wary after after that two weeks ago, yeah. the game two weeks ago. Now, they, they, obviously, they said, or JJ said, he was really, really banged up. Yep. Could barely walk and whatnot after the, the Penn State game. But looked fantastic against the against Ohio State last week. So, you know, any question on his health, I think, could be at least put to rest in terms of how he can perform. Uh, but I'm really, really high on him. And, and yeah, I mean, I agree with you. Freight train, watch out. Uh, either you're going to get out of the way or you're going to get squashed. And, yep. and, you know, I think the... The Hawkeyes here are going to get run over for sure. Yep. So, um, and Steve mentioned our picks video. So we do do uh, picks every week. Uh, we did conference championship picks. Obviously, Steve picked uh, this game. He clearly picked the, the Wolverines to cover here. We'll put a link up here if, if you want to see the, the rest of them. We went through the ACC, the Pac-12, Mountain West, American, and Sun Belt. Did picks on all of those conferences. Um, but yeah, I appreciate you kind of the rundown. Interesting to hear where some of those, uh, where the teams on both sides of the ball are at. Not too surprising on the on the defensive side for Iowa, but cer- certainly shows you where their struggles are at on offense. Um, that that's just that's just rough. So. I did have one last note. I mentioned yep. this in our picks video. You know, th- this game is, um, it, you know, it's in, in, in Indianapolis, yes. um, it, where the Colts play. Um, it's an indoor stadium, indoor field turf. So we, we kind of talked about this on another video. You know, if this game was was on a grass field outside here, and you know, in winter in, weather, in snow, yeah. yeah, something like that. I you know, I could see Iowa having a better chance. Sure, but I've been I've been to that stadium. I've watched the players play there, and it really suits. It's a fast turf. It's a fast field. Yeah. Um, the players that have more talent. The teams that have more talented players are 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 going to benefit. Yeah. Um, we saw Penn State there against Wisconsin a couple years, well, almost ten years now, seven years ago, um, and we've seen that in a lot of other games there, which I think again will just increase, especially in the second half. Iowa's players will be tired and run yep. down, and Michigan has so much talent. So that's just one other last note that I wanted to throw in there. And, Sounds good. Yeah. Hey, we appreciate you watching. We're going to do another one of these on the Pac-12 championship game where we break that down. And we already did one on the Mountain West Championship game. If you're interested in each of those videos, check out our channel. Uh, The Mountain West is already up, and the Pac-12 will be up really, really soon. So with that, hey, we thank you for watching. We'll see you next time on the Big Mountain.